we welcome you back onto our set. Lige Duzable is here with Danny Cannell. They're bringing us their top 12 in college football right now. So is Josh Pate. And Brad Crawford is going to project forward to what he thinks it's going to look like, not tomorrow, but when we're all said and done a little bit later. But Danny, I want to start with you. I, I always like your rankings because you. you're a little bit outside <laughs> the box. And you nice. know what Danny does? Yeah. Danny values not losing. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Isn't that the whole point of the game? Well, sure. Yeah. Not according to everyone. You know what else I do is I take that men in black little thing that they uh -huh. do that blanks your memory. <laughs> Every single week you have to forget everything you thought you knew. Like no I thought Clemson was pretty good. Yeah. You know what? I got them out of my top 25 because they stink wow. after what I saw in Louisville. So I want to make sure that I give credit to teams that win. Indiana that, and BYU stand out here. Absolutely, and they should. Indiana. It three. If Indiana <laughs> wore scarlet and gray or maize and blue, they probably would be the number one team in the country, but they don't, so they're way down uh, seven or eight spots lower than where I have them. They have dominated everybody on their schedule. Miami's getting crushed because they don't look good enough out there, and people want to hold it against them that they didn't you know, win a game by Duke enough or the fact they went down early, even though they won and covered in the game. I try to eliminate brand bias, give credit to the teams that go out there and win football games. We are nine games deep in the schedule, and people are like, oh, Indiana hasn't played anybody. They've been through a lot of teams in the Big Ten, and a lot of other teams have, and they've won every single time. <laughs> I'm so excited to hear what Lee has to say. Yeah, His eyebrows go. have just been raised the entire time. Hey, you know, I, that's I my know. guy. This is my guy Listen, here, too. I know you saw SMU there at number I, seven. I was a little bit, I, and I'm with that. Yeah, you know, I, I got SMU on my list as well. <laughs> I'm all for the, the fighting Kurt Signities, man, but I think you have to preference schedule. Schedule matters and who you actually play, right? Because we saw a pit team that was undefeated. And what happened when they went down to SMU? Get them out. They, they got lost. Smoked. Get them out. So, but yeah, uh, but that's what out. I'm saying. Like, who you play matters. So just because Indiana's undefeated doesn't mean they're a top five team in the nation, DK. <laughs> mm. Again, I love what top I've seen three. from Kurt. Yeah, top three <laughs> on your list. I love what I've seen from Kurt Signetic. Curtis Wart came back from injury and looked really good last week, uh, but to, to put him at the top three, I think is utterly ridiculous. And then also love SMU, but you can't put him in front of Texas when Texas has only lost to Georgia. You talked about winning and losing matters. Well, also SMU lost one game. They lost to BYU. So to me right now, even though BYU is undefeated, I think most people would say that Georgia and Texas are better than BYU. Lijay, I've seen your rankings. You have yeah. Penn State ahead of Indiana. Penn State's lost a game. What's up? Yeah. They lost to Ohio State, who's probably win? the second best team in the Where, nation. So it's a good loss? Where's their yeah. best win? So there is such thing as good losses, oh, right? Here we go. Just like SMU exactly. had a good a loss mindset versus BYU. You see my list, but you like that number 12 spot right there. Boise State. I think there could be some madness in the college football playoffs. Just Let's just say, for instance, BYU trips up right at the end of the year. Maybe they lose one game to get to the conference championship and lose. And Boise State is ranked higher than them on the college football playoff list, and they're a top four team that's a conference winner, right? They'll get a bye, and that opens the door potentially for another group of five team. I'm hoping that happens. We'll see. Army could be that team. The only thing is Bryson Daly dealing with an injury. We'll see where he's at right now. But I love what I've seen from SMU and Boise State. I think SMU has been disrespected too much entirely this season. They deserve to be in the top 12. Okay, I don't hate yours. I don't yeah. at all. You I'm, hate I'm, mine? I'm, I'm, what the heck? A little, I'm kind of like, I love yours, I'm just like, <laughs> wow. We know you love it. I, I might need like three to five business days to process that, okay? <laughs> um, okay, Josh, I'm going to come to you because uh, I want to get your top 12. But first, just a, a second to respond to these two top 12. I'm going to say what you were too ethical to say. I think it's dangerous for us to just be platforming Canell's takes here. It's very <laughs> propagandist of him. I think we all know what he's doing, but I am going to do, I'm going to basically take a sling blade. I'm going to cut through all the weeds. Um, Danny, you and I already went about this on radio early this morning. I love the power rating game, but I don't think it applies to rankings. I actually got teams like Indiana very high, Brigham Young very high. The whole Indiana, should they be ahead of Penn State thing right now? It's fun. I'm sure we'll chop it up a lot when the rankings come out tomorrow night. We know they got to go to Columbus. Like, we know that's going to sort itself out eventually. Indiana's like, and you see the rankings right here. This is what I think they'll have tomorrow night. It's the way I would do it if I were a committee member right now. Indiana, I'm just going to skip down to seven. They're like that, that sound when you walk out to your truck at night. If you grew up in the rural South like I did, it's really dark at night. You walk out to your truck and there's a noise in the woods and you have no clue what it is. It's not supposed to be there. It could be a wolf. It could be an armadillo. That's Indiana. Yeah, they haven't played much of anyone.
but they've also thrown everyone they have played in the wood chipper. So I'm going to give them a lot of credit for doing what they're supposed to do. I give Brigham Young a lot of credit for doing what they're supposed to do. Um, this is what legitimate teams should do. I'm never going to fault someone for playing an inferior schedule when I watch other supposed top 15 teams fall to alleged inferior competition every week. So I got them up there. I think Oregon is, to me, the best team I've seen. I'm pretty sure I've seen all these teams in person at this point. I think it's Oregon's title to lose right now, but I also don't think I've seen an elite team in the country this year yet. Uh, even that, that top five. Is that not the most vulnerable top five yeah. that we've seen in quite a while? Hey, Brad, uh, how do you think the committee is is going to go about judging these teams like it, like in Indiana, that maybe hasn't played anybody at the level of some other teams with multiple losses, like let's just say Alabama, who Pate had in his top 12? Strength of schedule matters. And I want to touch on something Danny said. That men in black check is called a neuralizer. So oh, mental thank you. <laughs> Yeah, neuralizer. I think the committee, though, is going to look at Indiana maybe not as favorably as we do as analysts because the strength of schedule is an issue right now. Do not have a win over a ranked team, as Josh stated. That could be coming against Ohio State. That's the, the season-defining game for me. And in my top 12 right now, I still have Indiana because I think an 11-1 finish is going to be enough. Now, that's only if the ACC doesn't get two teams in. SMU, I've seen the Mustangs be included here in three top 12s. Mm -hmm. SMU right now is not in mine. And this is my final projection how it's going to look about four weeks from now. I do not think the ACC is going to be a two-bid league unless the Mustangs beat Miami. Clemson out of the mix. Indiana, Penn State. I know it's Big Ten versus Big Ten in the first round, but the committee has said on the record they are not going to try and avoid conference game. Okay, so one ACC team. I saw, I saw you raise your eyebrows there. No SMU, Miami there instead. Four SEC and four Big Ten schools. I think that's probably the way it shakes out, too. Okay. I do. I, I think they'll, obviously, they're going to try to push for five or six, and if you get four, you're pretty happy there if you're the <laughs> SEC. The one thing I wanted to point out was we had all this problem with Indiana's uh, schedule. What about Miami's schedule? Like, we didn't, no one had any problem with me putting them up there at three or anybody else's top five. They haven't played anybody, and they flirted with disaster three times. They needed last-second, you know, Hail Mary defense against Virginia Tech, a bad call against Cal. Uh, the following week was Louisville. There was a, a one-possession game there. Yeah. And all Indiana's done against a similar schedule is one by two touchdowns or more dominating, and nobody has a problem with Miami sitting up there, myself included. I'll just yeah. say Cam Ward gives me the benefit of the doubt. Like, yeah. that guy's <laughs> the, the player. I think yeah. that's it, Cam Ward, when you're a guy that's probably top two candidate for the Heisman right now, then they're going to push your team up there. Also, I would say that Louisville, when going to Louisville was a big one, especially the way that they handled Clemson on the road this past week. And now Louisville's a top 25 team in the AP, so I thought that was a big win for Miami. All right, so those are the 12 teams from everybody. Brad's was a projection to the end of the season. Brad Crawford, Josh Pay, Danny Cannell, EJ Doosable with us here. Looking ahead to tomorrow night's first CFP ranking release. Tonight, Men's basketball begins, and Cooper Flag era in Duke begins. They're ranked number seven, yet they're the favorites to win it all. Our Matt Norlander will tell us why next.